Take it, that's our guy. He doesn't look... Uh, uh, like he's winning any... Um, most attractive man contest. We'd like to with you. Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists. Come to move us on and steal what little we have left. Six rounds won't get us far. We need to the stage for the set. We need to hold out for the cavalry. How do we do that? Like this. <laughs> You were gonna leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered? We could have a killer on our hands. Oh, Rusty's lost his hand. Damn it. <laughs> no. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar when oh. he met the dick in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're stickless for routine. Phelps, you gotta get me closer. I'm trying. This guy's. Freaking awful. Hit him, Cole. Spit him out. I can't. I'm literally. I've got my. Keep it steady. I'll try to bust his tires. He's showing you how it's done. Dumb. Maybe you shouldn't have waited for me, Phelps. Hit him. Clean this asshole off the road. Come on. Now is not the time to play around, Phelps. Your hands where I can see them. God damn. You're gonna answer some questions. I have a choice in this. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead, and your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay. Drunk. Pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. Hmm. You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Look, I was lying there on the sidewalk. He flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. Nice private chat. I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. <laughs> Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. <laughs> oh, Joey. Oh. Better go to the game well again. Hello. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? I need an APB out on a yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. Are there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, Detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup hmm. is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thanks. Okay, I'm back. I had to uh, I had to stop the recording there. It's still the same day. It's been like about an hour. Um, so yeah, so we just had a phone call. Turns to go back to the station at some point. Um, in fact, we're going to set off there. Um, but obviously, even though we always drive, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're driving now because we will get a phone call. We have a response on your APB regarding yellow cab number three five. Oops. The vehicle has been identified at a gas station. Now heading west on 7th Street. So we're actually going to go for the Garage on yellow cab trace. Let's hit it, Phelps. The cab driver might tie this whole thing together. I hope you're right. Ooh. Off we go. You see our taxi anywhere? 
Yeah, that's what I remember most about this particular case is that he ended up spending so much time trying to chase down. Actually, no, it, I can't remember if it's this case or another one. I think the taxi's not too bad, but I remember there is at least one case where you've got to sort of look for a buzz, and that actually takes quite a while. Oh. Where's that cab got you now? 11K, yellow cab number Okay, it's not too far away. We got him. <laughs> he looks happy. LAPD, we're investigating a murder. What's that got to do with me? The fare you picked up from Baron's bar last night. What was the woman wearing? It's a green dress. Oh, don't tell me something's happened to her. Tell me about her. She was with this sailor, and he was all over her. She wasn't having any of it. Said she just wanted to dance. But he had that look in his eye. Where did you drop them off? It's at the Crystal Ballroom. What time? Uh, after midnight. 12.30? Something like that. Thanks. You've been a big help. Well, that's gonna ruin my day. <laughs> okay, he's very dramatic, isn't he? Okay, well, we've got that, so... Uh, nice, right. Um, keep pressing the wrong button. Um, now we're going back to the... Um, the old CPS. Um, how far away did that take me? Uh, oof, sorry. Went for a bit of a drive. I don't know if... Old Rusty's going to make any comments. If not, I'll see if we get there. Alright, folks. We're home. I'm gonna go talk to old sailor boy. It's weird, it's like at half one and it's still so dark. Lousy smudge weather. He's in interview too. Uh, I know that one's this Thanks. way. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough, who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. Oh, uh, okay. I know it's this one. Detectives Phelps and Galloway. We know why you're here, Jessup. So it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble, that's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. Let's start at the beginning. I did love Rusty. You went to Baron's Bar. What time did you arrive? I got a 24 hour pass. I got there around seven. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure. We had a couple of drinks. That's a bad cop. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm not proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. Caught a cab to the Crystal Ballroom. Hmm. You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. Uh, you trying to palm it off? I'm gonna go for bad cup again. Bad cup again. He's pointing the finger directly at you, Jessup. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. <laughs> Where did you go after the Crystal Ballroom? Well, I think the wind had gone out of her sails by then. She caught a cab and I caught a bus back to the base. You're yeah, acting so suspicious, dude. Is that a doubt? That's a... Uh, no doubt. We spoke to the cab driver. <laughs> oh, Tell us up. what really happened at the Crystal Ballroom. I'd had enough. She was all upset about her husband bawling about her kids. She, she looked old. Left around closing, maybe 1.30. Got on a bus and she fell asleep on my shoulder. Which bus? An All-American, 249. Went past her place. She jumped off, and I stayed on it downtown. After that, I caught another bus to San Pedro. The Indiana's down there. She's being scrapped. And that was the last you saw of Teresa? Yeah, that's right. We didn't say much. I think she was kind of embarrassed. Hmm. The cab driver said that you were getting pretty familiar with Teresa. That's not how I'd put it. Um, what's that smirk, you dirty little scamp? Uh... So the last thing you wanted was her playing hard to get, 
Did that make you mad, sailor? Yeah, it did. She knew what a guy's looking for, all broads do. Dancing comes second. And what happened at the crystal ballroom? Nothing. Not even a little hand relief. She had another couple of drinks. There was no fun left in her. Just poured her guts out to some bartender. We're holding mm. you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. Can you put the guy in two in a cell and inform the commander? Sure, detective. A lot of bots and just coming up on homicide. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Brand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the bow has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assaults. Thanks. What now? Drive all the way to San Pedro and check in the locker? Let's see if the bus story checks out. It is this case. Yeah. I thought it might have been. Right. Okay, Rusty. Are we in? Okay, uh, voice start talking. I want to find out. Oh, it's, uh, oh, it's a bit of a straight shot, really. Three suspects in the can and one on the hook. What's that one doing? Hard evidence on any of them. KGPL to car 11K. 11K, come in. 11K, go ahead. Patrolman reporting that Bobby Ross's car game is breaking up at midnight. 11K, roger that. Only have time to get downtown, Cole. It's possible. Have them bring him in. Hmm. KGPL, we have Lars Kelton picked up. 11K, roger. Interesting. I still don't I still don't make him for it. To be completely honest. But who knows? Again. It's, it's the fourth time now in Homicide where they start pointing the finger at the husband and it's turned out to be something completely different. But I feel like of the... Th I'd argue of the uh, three, ca the four cases we've had so far, sorry, he seems the most unlikely. But that's just what they want you to think. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Whoa! Jesus. Depot. 1.49 p.m. Yeah, we have to go chase down a buzz. Joy, joy, joy. Thank you, ma'am. You have a safe trip now. Where are you boys headed today? LAPD. We're after the driver of All-American 249. Would have been around midnight onwards last night. Uh, just a minute. Frank Zeparelli. He's your man. Where can we find him? Frank is out on the 7-4. Can you tell us the route? Hang on, uh, I should have it mapped out here somewhere. Okay. Mm. I need to run the loop. Hey, yeah, great. Uh, we're not going to drive the whole thing, are we? Won't take long. We have a siren. <laughs> You say that. <laughs> Still a long ass ride. But I guess an easy way of doing this is to drive against traffic. No, obviously not drive against traffic, but follow the route backwards. Double time, Rusty. Double time. Because obviously in that case we're not chasing him round, it's... We're going to see him first. All American 7-4, let's go get him. Right. Uh, this could be a long trip, Cole. Or it could be a short one. And here's me without my hip flask and only a pain in the ass for company. Way to kick off the drive in high spirits, Rusty. Comments like that put me in just the right mood for some legwork. Touchy. You know what your problem is? You don't like hard work. This kind of rigorous search is what police work is all about. Discipline. Save it, folks. You're just as bored as I am. Fair enough. Unless it comes up very soon, 
I'll see when we find this buzz. No, nope, still no sign of him. Did you doze off, Rusty? I think you slept through my solving the case. Yeah, yeah, very funny. You just give me a nudge if you see him, all right? How about you nudge me? I think that's a job for your wife. Oh, Rusty. <laughs> I think there it is. There's the bus, Cole. Turn on the siren and pull her over. Hello, sir. Is some kind of problem, buddy? LAPD. We're investigating a murder. You had a sailor and a woman in a green dress on your bus late last night? That's correct. And the woman got off first, around 2 a.m.? Yeah, that's right. And the sailor stayed on all the way to downtown. Can you tell us where you let the woman off? On California Street. To tell you the truth, she looked a little lost, like she got off on the wrong stop or something. I didn't like dropping her off near that hobo camp. You've been a big help, Ooh. Mr. Zeffirelli. Well, at least we know it's not, um... It's not a boy. <laughs> Left her by the oh, dude. Which means he's as good as killed her. We can't eliminate any of them, but the disfigured man should be our starting point. I'm gonna call for some backup. These bows hate cops. Okay. Uh, right back to the hobo camp. Well, said back. I think we ought yet. to investigate the hobo lead. Well, yeah, if you think we ought to, then I guess we ought. Watch where you're driving, you hey, maniac! Hey, grease me for once. And how far away from the hobo camp are we? Uh, again, it's a bit of a straight shot, but I'll see when we get there. Okay. Hobo camp. 2.30. And just walk in with a shotgun. I'll do it. <laughs> Guys at the door, it's like... Greetings! Take it, that's our guy. He doesn't look... Uh, Uh, like he's winning any um, most attractive man contest. We'd like to with you. Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists. Come to move us on and steal what little we have left. Six rounds won't get us far. We need to stay close to seven. We need to hold out for the cavalry. How do we do that, my friends? Ooh. You want your rightful share? The disciples know we. Hey. Hey, what's your name? Mechum. Comrade Stalin. Very funny. We'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You, you can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done. Hmm. Okay, uh, oh, I was gonna say, like, where's my hat? I'm wearing it. Okay, newspaper, missing morphine, cups say goons fighting dope war. Interesting. Still working, Jack. I'm off to the Lighthouse Club in Santa Monica. Hello, Jack. Mr. Vincent, this is Courtney Sheldon. It's a buddy of mine from the war. Well, I'm sure you two will want to polish some old war stories. Good evening, Jack. Mr. Sheldon. Good night, sir. Take a seat, Courtney. We need your help, Jack. I told you I would have nothing to do with that. I'm fine too, Jack. Medical school's going well. I got a part-time job. Do dope peddlers need part-time jobs? We made a mistake and we're in trouble, Jack. A local gangster, Mickey Cohen, is putting on the squeeze. So hand it over, walk away. What's stopping you? We had a deal with them. That they would dole it out slowly. They said they would supply abortion clinics and doctors. But they've been moving it on to addicts. And they can't cope with the purity. So your problem is with gangsters being dishonest. <laughs> My problem is that people are dying. And that if this gets back to us, we'll all end up in jail. So how am I supposed to help, Courtney? This isn't the war. I can't just wave a magic wand and clean up your mess. <laughs> we want you to negotiate.
the only thing these guys understand is force, Sheldon. They got to the top back east by proving to be more vicious than the English, the Irish, and the Dutch. They make their own laws. That's the nature of a secret society. I'd say, Cordy, you want to be a doctor. How can you fight with that? We are better trained. I didn't make it through the war to come back to this kind of shit, Sheldon. Uh-oh. It seems like it's not going to end well. Okay. So that's newspaper number six, obviously. Um, no, that's not been marked because um, I've done this quest on this account previously. Quest. Case. Oh, well, bloody rope. Safe bet it'll match the mark under Teresa Terrelson's chin. Uh, but is it actually his? Oh, someone just put it in there. Like, seems to keep happening. Mm. Take it to the Crystal Palace. Ackerman Crystal Ballroom, sorry. Much of a dancer. Hmm. This doesn't pertain to the case. Still made the interesting sound of it though. I reckon it could be useful. Alright, I think we're done there. Yeah. Okay. Just one more stop to make. Let's head back to the police station and interrogate our new suspect. Something tells me. Oh, Rusty. Hold on, I'm coming. Something tells me that uh, he's going to be once nailed for it. An alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist. He'll be pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has history, opportunity, hard evidence. What motive? We have the evidence. We know she was here. All we need is a confession. We can charge the bum with murder. Well, here we go. I'm gonna find out for good. Well, this SOB is uh, going this way. I'm gonna guess it's number one. Yeah, hey, look at Ackerman, that. You were in the Marines. How do you know? The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government? Let's wait like that on a man's shoulders. You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? Hmm. Why did you kill Mrs. Terrelson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. Hmm. Bad cop for that. Well, I can go. Apparently, you can go down, or you can. Use the bloodstained rope as evidence. Are you denying he strangled Mrs. Terrelson with a length of rope? I'm not denying anything. You have to have proof, lackey. Hmm. We found a matching piece of rope in your lean-to. I think we'll find the blood will match too. I own no property. How could it belong to me? A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrelson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. You could tell me a riddle, eh? I'm gonna go back cop. Back cop. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed, but I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. Can't tell this Where guy just lost the plot. AM last night? At the camp. You were up on the hill. You were seen during the day. We have a witness. We have evidence. Come clean with me, Ackerman, and I'll see what I can do for you. I despise your pity. You have nothing that links me to this woman. You've got her bloody purse. Quite literally, her bloody purse. In your room. We are you cold, Ackerman. Her purse and the ballroom ticket were in your lean-to. Tell us why you did it. I kill because people need killing. 
That's what I was trained to do. I mean, maybe this guy actually did Stuart it. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrelson. <laughs> That's quite dramatic, wasn't it? Well, Clem's still in there. Hmm. E, I'm still. In, I'm not sure about uh, Clem. I think Clem and um, Mendes and from the first one. Luck I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor Theresa Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And the grand result you have brought me. Yeah, rather than dealing with any problems of ending homelessness by, you know, providing them with homes, it's now we'll just usher them out of the county and let it be someone else's problem. Can't even say that's a fault of Americans. In the UK, they're just as bad. Um, okay, an early visit to the Hobo camp might have offered a lead, but good luck finding a coherent witness. Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. Okay, a flashback, or, ooh, back to the, uh, back to the club. Interesting. Seems like he's becoming a bit of a regular here, he's called. How interesting. And now my heart, a blazing ruin, you say that it's called getting a thing for, um, I can't remember what her name is. She's German, isn't she? I think. Going to Roy, anyway. Uh, you're a married man, Cole. Don't do it, Bo. Don't do it, buddy. Hmm. The studio secretary murder. The penultimate homicide case. Lady. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Run, lady. Run. No, don't do it. No. Oh. Of course, we will look into it. Yes, I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Council. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring, a matching engagement ring. Sounds familiar. Deirdre Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any evidence face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. A 40-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. Hmm. So we're not even just dealing with the studio secretary. We're, we're going back to the Moller case, which was the Golden Butterfly, wasn't it? Interesting. All right, that is we're going to end it for today. So that's another case down. Um, seemingly pretty normal. Uh, you know, the guy. I, I, I don't know. He might have just been quite deranged because of the things that happened to him during the war, which is, you know, completely possible. Um, but he wasn't hiding away from the fact that he were accused him of, being, of him murdering someone and he wasn't denying it, so... I don't know, there's a chance, but we're getting close to the end of these homicide murders. Um, we've got this one, then we've got one more case after that, so... Yeah, it's, uh, it's about to get more serious, I bet. And obviously we're going back to old cases now, so I feel like there's definitely going to be some sort of payoff to all this... strange... Uh, links and stuff like that, maybe linking back to the Black Dahlia, who knows. Anywho, before I put let me take a second to thank my amazing patrons. My £5 patron is Ron Highlight. You can find links to his channel as well as my other £3 patrons in the description down below and on screen. I'll see great to my £1 patrons. Thank you so much, everyone. It is truly appreciated and it goes a long way to help with the channel, so I do thank you a lot for that. And if you're to become a patron, you can follow the link in the description down below. If you'd love to do that, because at the end of the day, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.